दिलों में प्यार की खुशबू तो होठो पर दुआ रखना दिलों में प्यार की खुशबू तो होठो पर दुआ रखना ईमा में वक्त से एक रिश्ता इश्को वफा रखना ईमा में वक्त से Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone and welcome to Friday Sermon for Kids where we at MTA will make a humble effort to bring you the wonderful guidance from beloved Hazur's Friday Sermons. This of course is a big, big task. So to help me out in this task, we have two amazing panelists on the set right now. So without another moment to waste, let me introduce them to you. To my immediate right is Monist. And to his right is Valid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. And guys, welcome to the show. Wa alaikum as salam, jazakallah. So, dear audience, now we know our panelists. We have so much to cover, it is unreal. Because today is our very first episode. So, number one, we're going to be going through all of the amazing segments that we have in store for you. But above all, the important topics that Hazur Anwar has been covering now for years. That's something we're going to be talking about today. And that, of course, is the subject of the Badri Sahabas. صحابہ کے حالات بیان کرتا رہا ہوں جن میں بدری صحابہ بھی تھے اور چند دوسرے بھی لیکن مجھے خیال آیا کہ پہلے صرف بدر کی جنگ میں شامل ہونے والے صحابہ کا ذکر کروں ان کا ایک خاص مقام ہے یہ وہ لوگ ہیں جن کو اللہ تعالیٰ راضی ہوا so this is how the incredible series of narrations and stories regarding the Badri companions started with the sermons of our beloved Hazur, may Allah be his helper. And this topic, the Badri companions, is what we are going to be making our main topic today. And of course, how can we possibly forget? We'll be covering this week's Sermon of Beloved Hazur Ayyadahullah Ta'ala bin Nasrih Al-Aziz. But before that, we have a very, very interesting segment for you guys. That segment is where the audience, that's all of you guys, are going to be telling us what you have learned about this topic. And in our regular segment for this, you will be telling us anything and everything that you have learned from that week's sermon of Beloved Hazur. But for now, Let's take you straight to that segment. Let's go straight to Kids Take. In the Friday segment, our beloved Hazur said, Hazrat Umar, Reza Tala Anho, he loved animals so much. One day he was walking down the road, he saw some camels locked up. He said to the owners, why are they locked up? They should be free. Let them loose. What I've learned from Azur's khutbahs on Badri Sahabas is that I should always be ready to sacrifice everything for Islam. Once, there was a famine, and Hazrat Umar went outside to pray. As he was praying, rain began to fall, and the people rejoiced. Once, Hazrat Umar and his daughter asked, You have been granted victory and wealth, so why do you not wear better clothes or eat better foods? He replied, If I won't do the same as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi sallam, then I will not achieve the same rank. Jazakallah. Jazakallah, ahsan al jaza to our Kids Take presenters. Now, there is simply no way, like literally no way, that even our whole show could do any justice to the two years worth of stories and narrations that beloved Hazur has been mentioning in his Friday sermons about the Badri companions. But I think for the little bit of time that they got, they gave some pretty good details. Yeah, I like the fact that so many of them remember the stories of the companions. It's the best way to memorize something. Those stories are actually amazing. 
But I think we should first know exactly what it means when we say the word Badri Sahaba. Like, what does that word even mean exactly? Well, well, Monas, it's like you knew exactly what was on my mind because that's exactly what I was thinking. Badri Sahaba is something that I am not going to be telling you myself because that's exactly what we're going to find out on our next amazing segment, which, dear audience, is a segment that will come up once in the entire episode at any time that it is needed most. And I think right now is a pretty needy time. So without another moment to waste, we're going to go straight to the word of the sermon. Badri Sahaba are not one, but actually two Urdu words that come from the Arabic language. Sahaba in Urdu means companion, and Badri is an adjective, which means of Badr. In Islamic history, Badri Sahaba were the companions who had the honor of fighting in the very first main battle fought by Muslims. The Muslim victory of the Battle of Badr miraculously fulfilled an amazing prophecy when Muslims were still very low in number. For that reason, Badri Sahaba have a very high station in spirituality and bravery. In other words, they were true men of excellence. That's why their stories are so important and amazing. And there are a lot more to go through, no? Like over 300. It's interesting you say that number because actually there's a difference of opinion on that. Really? Weren't there only 313 companions who took part in that battle? That's what we always thought. Well, that's the benefit of listening to the sermons of beloved Hazur, may Allah be his helper, because whenever Hazur discusses topics, he goes in a lot of details. And in this particular area, that's the number of companions that were at the Battle of Badr, there's difference of opinion. The people that started writing the history of it, many years after the battle, they had different numbers. Some people thought it was 300, some said even more, 320. Some said 310, but 313 is the most accepted and famous number. So why were Badri Sahaba so important? And why has Hazur been mentioning them for so long? Excellent question. There's actually a reason why the Battle of Badr was so important in the history of Islam. Number one, the Battle of Badr was the first ever time Muslims ever engaged in a battle this big. In other words, they had never done it at that scale before. And number two, that's the more important reason, there was such a power imbalance, it was unreal. The size of the Muslim army was around 300, the non-Muslim Meccans were over a thousand. The number of horses, horses were like the fighter jets back in those days, in that time. The Muslims only had two horses, the non-Muslim Meccans, a hundred horses. The Muslims had 70 camels, the non-Muslims, 700 camels. So, in other words, the fact that the Muslims were ready to take part in this battle because Allah commanded them was, in a way, an announcement, a declaration from them that they were ready to lay down their life for Islam. That's why they got such a high status as a result of participating in the Battle of Badr. Because basically, by participating in it, they proved that they were ready to lay down everything for Islam. So if they were this special, what kind of treatment did they get? Were they treated the exact same afterwards? It's a very important question that you asked here because we can't know every single story of every single companion later on, but one story of one Badri Sahaba, one Badri companion that we know is the story of Hazrat Hatib bin Abi Balta. Hazrat Hatib, actually at the time of the conquest of Mecca had done something that was considered very objectionable for state security, for safety reasons of the Muslims. The Holy Prophet ﷺ wanted to make sure that the conquest of Mecca remains secret and no war breaks out. There's wisdom in that. It means you don't want people to be harmed and no bloodshed to take place. So you swiftly take over and no war happens. Hazrat Hatib had secretly tried to tell his family in Mecca so that in case war breaks out, they can run away and seek safety. But he was found out. Now in normal countries, when you do something like that, it's the capital punishment, which basically means you get executed for that. They basically end your life. But with Hazrat Hatib, even though some companions said that this person should be executed, the Holy Prophet told them 
very, very explicitly that do you not know that this person, Hatib, has seen the battle of Badr? And it may be that Allah has already said about all of the companions that took part in the battle of Badr that they have all been forgiven and they can do whatever they may like. So that is just one story that gives us an idea of how much respect and dignity the Badri Sahabas had not just with the Holy Prophet وسلم, but in the sight of Allah Ta'ala. And actually, this treatment of the Badri companions was something that continued, as we know from other stories, through the lives of the Khulafai Rashidin that came afterwards. Murabi Sahib, this is amazing information, but I feel like we're forgetting something super important. Ah yes, something super important. We even promised our viewers. Guys, what are you talking about? This week's Khutbah! Wow, you guys have really proven that you belong on this panel right here. Because this week's Khutbah was actually a very, very important one. It was, Hazur himself said, the final sermon that he delivered, which was covering the incredible life of Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu. But first, very important question for both of you. Have you guys listened to the Khutbah this week at least once? Alhamdulillah, yes! Oh really? So let's make this a little interesting. Can you two give me at least one point that could prove to me from the khutbah that you've seen it? One point only? But there was so much stuff. Anyways, Hazur mentioned how Hazrat Umar Anho was very careful about how the money was being gathered up in the Baitul Mal, the house of wealth. He personally made sure nothing was getting lost or misused. Impressive, Walid. Monas, your turn. So I remember a powerful story in where a person gave some milk to Hazrat Umar Anho. And when Hazrat Umar Anho discovered that it was from the zakat money, he took out whatever was in his mouth and refused to drink it. He said that zakat money is only for the poor. Wow, you guys are on a roll. But the fact is, that's just the reality. There are just so many beautiful stories about Hazrat Umar that Hazur has been mentioning. I just struggle sometimes to think about what it is that I'm going to talk about, right? Even today, I was struggling to pick a story. But I think one story stood out to me a lot. That was the story of the Egyptian who won the race against the son of the governor of Egypt. Basically, there was an Egyptian, he raced the son of the governor, and he won that race, and as soon as he won it, the son of the governor started hitting him with a whip, saying that, I am this honorable person, how dare you, you know, make me a loser in this race? And he hit him a lot with the whip. That Egyptian was so hurt that he traveled all the way to Medina, told Hazrat Umar, this is the story, I was hit by this person. And Hazrat Umar took that so seriously, he called both the governor and his son to Medina, made them stand trial, and then gave a whip to that Egyptian who had won the race and told that Egyptian, now you whip this person that calls himself the son of an honorable person. And he hit him until that was enough. And then he stopped him. But after that, he even told him to hit the governor. But the Egyptian said that, no, I can't do that. And Hazrat Umar understood. And he said that to the governor. He told the governor, why is it that you have made these people as if they were slaves, even though they were born as free people in this world? So this is something that really shows Hazrat Umar did not just believe in justice, he actually practiced it. That's such a beautiful story. It's like Hazrat Umar knew how to handle sore losers with justice. Yeah, and not just that, Hazrat Umar who had this amazing saying that he would tell people often about who his favorite type of person was. Who is that? Well, Hazrat Umar said that his favorite type of person is the one who reforms and points out his weaknesses and tells him about them. In other words, it's a person who is open and honest with him. He makes sure that that person knows what his weaknesses are. Now just think about that. This was the most powerful individual in the world. He controlled half of the known world at that time, right? But he was still this open that he wanted people to point his weaknesses out so he could reform them. 
This actually is the reason why so many people simply fell in love with this character. Yeah, if the world just listened to these beautiful points Hazur says in his Friday sermons, most of the world's problems would just be fixed on their own. They absolutely would, Valid. And the truth is, we can't possibly cover all of the amazing stories that Hazur has been giving in his Friday sermons now. But you, dear audience, you can cover those stories. You can go to those sermons, look at them. But not just that. Tell us about what you have learned and be a part of our amazing show right here. And that actually is exactly what you are going to be learning how to do in this next critical message of ours. Did you enjoy this week's Friday Sermon for Kids? Want to know how you can make it even better? Tell us what you learned from Beloved Hazur's Friday Sermon and send your questions and videos at this email and we'll try our best to include them. Now remember, we can include all of your videos every single time. So be sure to check out our social media on Instagram and Twitter at MTA Canada. Remember, at Friday Sermon for Kids, you're not just the audience, you make the show. See you next time. Hey guys, if you were allowed to go to a candy shop and get all of the candies you ever wanted, would you only take two and three and then stop? Obviously not. That makes no sense. Yeah, you would want to take them all. Take them all. Well, dear audience, you heard it. What we give you on this show at Friday Sermon for Kids are just those two to three candies. For the full experience, you should go on MTA International and watch the full sermon there. Until next week. Khuda Hafiz. से एक रिश्ता इश्क को दिलों में प्यार की खुशबू तो होठों पर दुआ रखना ईमान में वक्त से एक रिश्ता इश्क रखना ईमान में वक्त से एक रिश्ता इश्क रखना